Well, if you're from the Tokyo or Kanto area here in the month of February 2014, these images uh, definitely are very familiar to you. Some of the heaviest snowfall that hit the region in years out here, and not just due to one snowstorm, but back-to-back -back snowstorms that caught a lot of people off guard, even myself and many forecasters as well, definitely underpredicted uh, this storm system. Hi everyone, meteorologist Robert Spetta here with you coming from Tokyo, Japan. And uh, definitely uh, this storm system caught us a lot of us off guard and today we're going to be breaking down what exactly happened and uh, why is this so uncommon to see this much snowfall in the Tokyo metro area. So what caused this heavy snowfall? Well, let's first examine uh, some areas just outside of the Kanto Plain, just towards the west of Tokyo where you see some of the heaviest snowfall on earth believe it or not and any skier around the world will even tell you that some of the freshest powder uh, can be found in regions which are just about a two to three hour drive from the downtown metro area and why is this so and even just off towards north the famous ice monsters are found there on the western seaboards well the main reason for this is what we call sea effect snow and it's much like lake effect snow you'll find in the states when cool northerly winds roll over some relatively warmer waters and it ends up picking up an abundance of moisture here and it drops it down on these coastal areas where it comes ashore well that accompanied by the mountain chain that runs through the center of the uh, country of japan all the way from hokkaido down towards the south we call these the japanese alps uh, those end up blocking a lot of this moisture from escaping over towards the Pacific coastline. And what we see is some very heavy snowfall. Well, that's a key thing to keep in mind. Tokyo doesn't see all that much snow because of these northwesterly winds and all uh, these mountain chains are blocking it. So anytime you get these uh, storm systems coming in from the north with the polar front jet, which typically runs into that direction, well, the moisture doesn't often make it over towards the Pacific coast. So what happened? Why did we see so much rain and snowfall in the month of February? Well, once again, there is that polar front jet there towards the north. That typically carries a lot of these storm systems, but every now and then, you get a storm developing here in southeastern China, right around the Shanghai area. Sometimes you hear these referred to as Shanghai lows. In Japan, we also call these Nangan lows or Southern Coast Low Pressure Systems. And what do we mean by that is that they develop there, they move over the southern Japanese islands, typically bring some heavy rain showers, even some thunderstorm activity, and the run then run up along the Pacific coastline of Japan. If they're close enough and temperatures are cold enough, that's when you'll start to see some heavy snowfall. In the month of February, we saw back-to-back -back low pressure systems that did just that. They developed here in southeastern China, got picked up by that subtropical jet combined with the polar front jet, and really they just merged together and intensified just off the south southern parts of Japan. That combined with the warm ocean current of the Kurosu current fueled these storm systems, and they came just close enough towards Japan and just cold enough temperatures, and actually temperatures uh, right around about the freezing mark. So that indicated just enough moisture in the air it was able to support it and we saw unprecedented amounts of snowfall out here in the Tokyo area over 60 centimeters overall accumulated in just one month when typically you average around five to six centimeters of total snowfall accumulations around the Yakuska area I know many people that followed the Western Pacific weather.com website posted photos and videos of the power going out and even numerous traffic accidents and even one report of a train collision. For a week to follow after the storm system pushed through, some areas and rural areas just outside of the Kanto Plain were still stuck in snowfall. Overall, it's still an ongoing story, but what I can say is that it is not that common. You just need all these factors in place, these southern coast lows to move from the southwest towards the northeast to really get these type of storm systems to occur. All right, that is all for right now, everybody. Thanks again for watching here at westernpacificweather.com. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, you can post them down there in the comment box below. And as always, stay safe out there. Oh, don't forget, uh, go ahead and click the subscribe button. And also, uh, go ahead and uh, find us on Facebook and Twitter at Westpac Weather. I'm starting to put more of these videos together in the future. And hopefully, we can uh, help you learn a little bit more about the weather out here 
in the Western Pacific and Eastern Asia. Stay safe out there, everybody, and thanks for watching.